Hello friends, hope all of you are doing great today. Now in the previous uh, four or five lectures, we have been seeing about shunt motors and series motors, right? So today we are going to see about a new motor, which is having a series winding as well as a shunt winding, okay? So today we are going to discuss about compound motors, which has both, which has both a series winding and a shunt winding and a shunt winding. Shunt winding on the poles. Okay, remember that why do we have this shunt winding and why do we have the series winding? They are usually actually used to create the magnetic poles in the motor. Okay, so if you this is your pole, okay, these are actually windings that come from the these are actually windings, and depending upon whether they are connected in parallel to the armature or series to the armature, you call them as a series or a shunt winding. Okay. So now with this definition of differential, sorry, compound motors. So if you are having a pole like this, there will be two sets of windings. Okay, one will be a shunt winding and another will be a series winding, something like this. Very crude diagram. Okay, so there will be two sets of windings on the poles here. All right. So and one will be the series winding and one will be the shunt winding. And this is the other part of the winding. Okay, now you know that a winding can be wound either clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, for example, the series winding and the shunt winding are wound clockwise together. Okay, so the current would be in the same direction and the fluxes would add up. Now, if series is wound in the clockwise and the, sorry, the shunt is wound in the clockwise and series in the counterclockwise direction, the currents would be opposing, the magnetic fields would be opposing and there would there be producing uh, different MMFs. That means cancelling MMFs or opposing MMFs, all right? So now based on this, the uh, compound motors are classified into cumulatively compound, cumulatively compound, or they are classified into differentially compound, differentially compound. Now I could have explained this entire thing by drawing a diagram. Okay, I can explain the entire thing by drawing a diagram and showing that one is clockwise, one is counterclockwise. But that is how not how engineers work actually. Okay, you should, you need proper sign conventions by which you look at the motor and without even caring about how the motors are wound, you should be able to identify whether the motor is a cumulatively compound motor or a differentially compound motor. All right. For the detailed diagram, you can look at all the books. They are all having that detailed diagram. But we are going to explain this in terms of something which is called a dot convention. Okay. The dot convention is used in circuit theory as well as in transformers, okay, to find out the polarity of the uh, polarity of the output with a given input, okay. So dot convention with respect to our shunt motors, sorry, compound motors, we are going to have some set rules, all right. First one is that the current flowing, the current flowing into a dotted, into a dot produces a positive MMF, okay? Even if it's not clear now, it will be clear in a few minutes, okay? Next is the current flowing into an undotted uh, portion, undotted marking, okay? Undotted marking produces a negative MMF. Okay, so this is one thing to understand. Current flowing into a dot means positive MMF. Current flowing into an undotted means it produces negative. MMF. So what is this dots? Any winding, if you see a transformer, etc., two windings which share a particular core, to understand how they are coupled with each other, you use this dot conventions, all right? For example, what I've told is that, for example, here is a dot, and if the current is flowing into the dot, it produces a positive MMF, okay? And if this is the dot and the current is flowing into the undotted area, this produces a negative MMF. So this is what the first two points are showing you. Third point is that when two currents are flowing, two currents are flowing into the dotted area, to the dotted end, okay, two currents are flowing into the dotted end, it produces MMF that will add, 
that will add okay what does that mean let me just put it down here itself so you are having two windings here so let me just connect it like this it can be a magnetic coupling also what it means is that for example here i am putting the currents here so this is current i and this is also current i okay now this would produce an mmf 1 and this would produce an mmf 2 all right now the winding pro let me just call this winding 1 and this is winding 2 okay now what it means is that the current is flowing into the dot here and the current is flowing into the dot here also that means mmf 1 and 2 will add up okay mmf 1 and 2 will add up okay the fourth point is two currents flowing into a dotted end and an undotted end and an undotted end the mmf will oppose the mmf will oppose what does that mean let me again take two windings here okay i'm just showing this coupling it can be electrical coupling it can be magnetic coupling also so this is the current let the next dot be here and this is the current i okay so this is winding one and this is winding two winding one produces mmf one and winding two produces mmf two now here you see in winding one the current enters the dot and in winding two the current enters the undotted area all right that means here the mmfs will oppose mmf will oppose all right so now in your compound motors also on the same pole you are having two windings one is the series and the shunt winding therefore based on how they are connected with respect to dot polarities you can divide it into cumulatively as well as differentially compound so let us just draw the circuit of the cumulatively compound motor okay so cumulatively compound motor cumulatively compound motor let us draw the circuit okay so in this what is the meaning of this the series and the shunt winding series and the shunt field winding okay the mmfs add up mmfs add up all right they do not oppose they add up so in circuit terms how to draw it let us just draw it in terms of circuit terms okay so this is your ea machine and this is your ra so this is your armature all right this is your armature and let me draw the series field now so this is r series and this is the winding which is showing the flux okay so this is l series okay and here you are going to have your rf and here you are going to your lf okay and this is your vt and this is the current entering here and this is the current entering here and this is il okay so this is ia and this is il now let us mark the dot polarities so that we can make these two cumulatively compound so here let me mark the dot polarity let me take this shunt winding as the reference so i am taking this as the dot polarity so this is entering the dot for cumulatively compound in the series winding also the current should enter the dot right so the dot would be at this terminal now if i put the dot here the current would enter the undotted terminal okay so that is a different type of motor so here it is cumulatively compound because the current in both ia is entering the dotted here and if is entering the dotted now remember it need not be the same current which is flowing okay for this explanation it not will be same current if is different and ia is different but the important thing here is that the mmfs will add up in a cumulatively compound motor okay okay so here let me just write a small point here so current flows into the dots current flows into the dots so the this is a cumulatively compound cumulatively compound take your own time and understand all these things properly all right okay and next type of motor is called differentially compound differentially compound now what is the differentially compound motor okay here the mmfs produced by the series and shunt winding would 
oppose all right will oppose will oppose each other so in circuit parameter circuit terms how we have to draw it let us draw the motor once again this is the armature okay ra and this is ea so i have drawn the armature and from here let me draw my series winding so this is the rsc and this is the series winding lsc and let me draw the shunt winding now so this is rf and this is lf so this is rf and this is lf and this is my motor applied voltage vt il this is if and this is your i series which is also equal to the armature current ia in series motor the current through the winding is same as the armature current so here let me put the reference dot here now so in differentially compound the mmfs produced by series and shunt winding will oppose each other they will oppose each other so here if is entering the dot okay therefore isc should enter the undotted area of the winding so therefore i will put my dot here so if you see a cumulatively compound motor sorry differentially compound motor the current is entering the undotted area so this is how circuit uh, is analyzed this is how engineers analyze a circuit you cannot always open the motor and see what is inside even in transformers to find the polarity of the secondary they use this dot conventions in transformers how they use is that in transformers what they tell is that for example you are applying a positive polarity at the dotted end in the primary okay in the secondary you will get a positive in the dotted end so in the secondary the polarity would look like this all right so this is how in transformers they do and this is our explanation for the dc motors okay so let us draw, just uh, make one more small calculation here let us write the equation here now so to write the equation we know that vt is equal to ea plus ia into ra plus rsc straightforward equation there is nothing difficult about this and ia will be equal to il minus ish okay ia is equal to il minus ish or i am calling it as the field current now the important thing here is the net mmf okay so net mmf f net will be equal to the mmf produced by the shunt winding okay mmf produced by the shunt winding okay plus or minus the mmf produced by the series winding now if it is plus it would be a cumulatively compound if it is a differential compound it would be minus because in differential the mmfs oppose and in cumulatively the mmfs add up and of course armature reaction is always going to reduce the flux all right armature reaction always reduces the flux so here positive for cumulative compound and negative for differentially compound negative is for differentially compound okay now in the next session let us see the terminal characteristic of a cumulatively compound motor so i hope you have liked this particular session clearly i have defined what is a compounding of the motor cumulatively compound and differentially compound all right and i have also discussed a little bit about dot convention that we use in dc motors so if you like this video please like share and subscribe my channel and i'll see you in the next video thank you